Unit 8A, Lesson F, deals with graphing linear inequalities. Uh, what you should be able to do after watching this video is you should be able to say, I can graph a linear inequality on a coordinate plane, All right, and I can check whether each ordered pair is a solution to an inequality. Okay, uh, This is going to be a lot of review, uh, which is nice because it's the end of Unit uh, 8A, and you have a test coming up, so this is going to be a lot of review on how to graph with a little bit new stuff thrown in with the inequality stuff. All right, so first off, determining if an ordered pair is a solution. This is something we've done before, all right, with equations. Now we're doing it with inequalities, okay? It's done exactly the same way. We know each ordered pair is labeled with an X and a Y, okay? And if we want to determine if this point is a solution, we plug it in and do our calculation. So I'm going to say 0 minus 3 times 0 is less than 6. Of course, that's zero. Anything times zero is zero. So that's zero less than or equal to six. This is true. So we would say yes, zero, zero is a solution. Remember, we don't say it's the solution because lines have an infinite number of solutions. All right, so it's one of the solutions. Looking at B, same situation. X and Y, plug them in. I have negative 3 plus 2 times 5, less than or equal to 8. All right, this is going to be 10. It's just order of operations. All right, we subtract there. We get 7 greater than or equal to 8, greater than or equal to 8. This is obviously false. So we would say no, 3, 5 is not a solution. And again, we don't say no solution because there are a number of solutions that will work. There's, in fact, an infinite number of solutions. This happens to not be one of those infinitely many solutions. All right. Uh, some new tries you'll do in class. Let's move on to actually graphing now. And the reason why it's important to do those first steps is you'll see uh, it helps to test our shading point as we go here. All right. So let's go ahead and work on this. All right. We have... An equation that's already in slope intercept form, so I know right off the start that my slope is 4 over 1, my y intercept is 0, negative 3. This is all review. All right, we go down 0, negative 3. From there, I would go up 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 1. Okay. And then this is the new part. Okay. We look at this sign. You'll notice there's no line under it. It's just greater than. Unlike example B that's greater than or equal to. All right. There's your greater than. There's your greater than or equal to. Okay. When we look at that, all right, we know that this or this is going to produce a dotted or dashed line. Depending on how you like to say it. All right. And this or this will produce a solid line like you're used to making. Okay, so right now you'll notice that we're going to create a dotted or dashed line as we do this. Okay, so let me get my correct line here. And let's go ahead and graph this. Okay, Oop, I'm a little bit off on the bottom. There we go and I have my line in there okay now something else that's going on in this all right is that this is an inequality so it's not just the line and the pieces that are on the line that are important there's also other areas for example all right the point zero zero is not on the line okay if I plug in zero zero I end up with zero greater than negative three and that's true all, in fact, any point that's over here in this area that I'm shading right now will give you a true statement. All right. Anything from this side will give you a false statement. For example, if you choose the point 5, 0, all right, and plug it into the equation, all right, 5, 0, that's 20 minus 3, that's 17. I have 0 greater than 17. That's obviously not true. Okay. So that's why it's not shaded. So, What's different about graphing inequalities is you may have a dotted or dashed line, okay, or you may have a solid line still, 
but you also have to shade an answer. Okay. Now, when you're in slope-intercept form, shading is a lot easier than just testing a point. All right. There's actually a shortcut. All right. And I'm going to show you that shortcut on the next one here. Okay. So on this one, we have one of our special cases. This is slope-intercept form. I could just go ahead and say slope is 0 over 1, and my y-intercept is 0, negative 3. And so I would do 0, negative 3, go up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1, up 0 over 1, like that. Okay, I'm going to create a solid line this time. So there's my line, Put my arrow on this end. Okay, and then what I could do when I'm in slope intercept form, and only when I'm in slope intercept form, is I could read that symbol. That symbol says greater than. So if I go to the y axis, where are all the numbers greater than this y intercept? Well, that's zero. That's uh, negative three. If I look and go up, all these numbers up here are bigger. So I'm going to shade above that line. Greater than is above, less than is down. Okay. So let's take a look at the last one. All right, that we have over here. All right. We know the slope is two thirds. Uh, I'm going to move it here. I'm not sure if that's on your screen or not. So let me erase that. Slope is two thirds, and my y-intercept is zero negative five. I'm going to create a solid line, and because it says less than, I'm going to shade the bottom half of that line. So this is how it looks. I go down to zero negative five. I go up one two over one two three, up one two over one two three. Again, that is nothing new. That's just graphing a line. Okay, from there. I'm going to create my line. Make sure it goes all the way through the graph, or at least the best I can do it. All right, put my arrows on each end. All right, it's a solid line, like we said. All right, and we said this said less than, so I want to shade the lower half of the line. When I go to the y intercept, down is down here, so this is where I'm going to shade. Down here. Up to the line, don't go beyond it. All this gets shaded here. Okay? Now, if you don't know how to read the sign, testing a point works every time. All right, so again, let me go back to the idea of testing a point. All right, if you could use the point zero, 00, it's always the easiest. It, in other words, if your line does not go through zero, 00, use it. Okay? So if I want to test a point zero, 00 and I plug it in for x and y, I have 0 is less than or equal to anything times zero, 00. So I have 0 minus 5, which is negative 5. Is 0 less than negative 5? Nope. So I have a little rhyme that goes like this. If true, shade 2. All right, so if it's true, you shade to it. If it's false, you go away. All right, so if true, shade 2. This is false, so go away from it on the other side. If true, shade 2. If false, go away. That's not the rhyme part. But I would say if true, shade 2. All right, let's move on. We've got some new tries for you to do in class. Let's take a look at what do you do when you're not in slope-intercept form. You have two choices. Uh, you could solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form, although that does tend to lead to some sign mistakes and some errors with flipping. I think it's better, in terms of what I've seen, is just find the x and y intercept and graph. Okay, and then we could test the point to see how to shade. So in this one, we would say our x-intercept, all right, and again, this is just review, so I'm going to go quick. All right, my x-intercept is simply x equals negative 4, which is the point 0, negative 4. And my y-intercept is negative y equals negative 4. And notice I'm using an equal sign right now, all right, just to solve for the intercept, all right. We get positive 4, so that's the point uh, 0, 4. And I notice I made a mistake up here. I apologize for that. I put these in the wrong spot. This should be negative 4, 0, because it's an x-intercept, not a y-intercept. Okay, so we go on our graph. We go negative 4, 0. And we go 0, 4. We play the old-fashioned game of connect the dots. Now, before I connect the dots, notice this is greater than... So I'm going to use a dashed line here. All right, so it's going to look like this. 
Okay, and let me extend that line all the way through. There we go. And now I have to shade. All right, you'll notice the directions don't tell me the shade. That's something you have to know you have to do. All right, like I said earlier, the point zero zero is by far the easiest thing to do unless your line goes through it. My line is not going through zero zero. So with that being said, I'm going to take that point. All right, so I plug zero in for x and zero in for y, and I end up with zero greater than negative four. Is that true? Yes, it is. All right, so like I say, if true, go two, and that means we shade all of this. If true, go two. All right, let's take a look at B. All right, and again, B, we got to find our intercepts. Don't be fooled by the fact that this is reversed. If I want to find my x-intercept, I take negative 10x less than 15, which means my x-intercept is going to be, after I divide by negative 10, uh, I can take a 5 out of there, negative 3 over 2. Okay? So that's the point, negative 3 over 2, comma, 0. Negative 3 over 2 is just negative 1.5. When it comes to graphing, decimals are usually easier. So negative 1.50 is right there. All right, my y-intercept is going to be, whoops, equals 15, divide by 5, y equals 3. That's the point 0, 3 as a y-intercept. So right there. All right, before I draw my line in, I'm going to double check. I see that this is less than. Okay, less than means I have a dotted line. So I'm going to draw my line in. Again, I'm going to make sure my line goes all the way through my graph, so I'm going to extend it, put an arrow on that end, and now I have to deal with the shading. Once again, I have a line that does not go through 0, 0. So I'm going to test the point 0, 0. Why? Because anything times 0 is 0. And anything times 0 is 0, so I end up with 0 less than 15. That is true. If true, go to, so 0, 0 is this way, so I'm going to shade this way. So all that gets shaded. All right? Last example. Now, using the method of intercepts is a problem when you are equal to 0. All right, because what's going to happen is you're going to end up with your x and your y intercept being the same exact point, and that's a problem. So if you're ever equal to 0, you do have to do the old-fashioned solve for y, which is something we worked on first semester. I'm sure you remember it, of course. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is subtract the x from both sides, then divide by 2, so I end up with y is less than or equal to negative 1 half x, which means my y-intercept is 0, 0. From there, I go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2. I could do it again, down 1 over 2. I could go up 1 backwards 2. Oh no, it won't let me. Alright. Up 1, backwards 2. Up 1, backwards 2. Alright, the more dots you put on your graph, the more accurate it's going to be. This time I'm using a solid line to go through all these points. Because it has the little less than or equal to. And you'll notice, in this case, I can't use 0, 0 to test because my line goes through the point zero, 0, So choose some other point. Like, for example, 1, 1 would be incredibly easy to plug in. All right, 1 for x, 2 times 1 is 2. That means I'm going to have 3 up here, less than or equal to 0. That is not true, so why would I go to it? Instead, I'm going to go away from it, which means I'm going to shade all this. Or, you could keep in mind, we did put it in slope-intercept form, and when you're in slope-intercept form, you could read the y-axis, and we go. this says less than or equal to, so we go to the y-intercept, we want less than, which is down, which would lead us to shade the same exact thing. Okay, so like I said, a lot of review today. All right, just a little bit of new stuff. Make sure you're filling this stuff out. All right, let us know what you know and what you don't know. And what you saw today was a review of finding x and y-intercepts, all right, graphing with intercepts. The new thing was solid versus dotted lines and shading. All right, testing a point is not new. We've done this before, determining if a point's a solution. Okay, 
So that's not a new idea. On the first page, graphing and slope intercept form, not a new idea. Solid versus dotted. All right, or I guess I pointed the wrong way here. This one's dotted versus solid. All right, make sure you know what you're doing before you actually start graphing. We'll see you tomorrow.